In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do deformation animations. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Welcome back, guys. Yesterday, we made this beautiful mushroom using the screw modifier and a very simple tune shader. And the diffuse shader was explained to you of how that works. Now that we've created this, I thought, let me introduce you to a very uh, niche, unique concept called deformation animation. It's not a usual way to animate, but it's definitely a very interesting one with thousands, like endless possibilities. Um, right. Now that we're in our scene, next to the one that is that squiggly line, instead of going front, which is numpad one, we're going to go back to the back over here. Now that we're in the back, we're going to go click on this over here, which is our toggle X-ray mode. With X-ray selected, we're going to change to edit mode. So we're going to select this over here. And we're going to press tab to go into edit mode. Boom. Now that we're in edit mode, which is pretty dope, let's just lower this down. We're going to change this from our shader viewport. Let me just expand this open. And we're going to change it to our timeline. Currently, our timeline is clean. So the first thing we want to do is go to edit, preferences, add-ons, and we're going to search A-N-I-M and install anim all. Make sure you've ticked this box over here. Once you've done that, save preferences and you A4 away. Now yes, if you're new to Blender, this is going to be something new to you. There's this little line over here. If you click it, it it's expandable. It shows you this. A, a better way is just to press N on your keyboard to open and close this. Now what's unique, because we enabled anim all, we have this new option over here which is pretty dope. Anim all. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to select our keyframe. And uh, w when we select this keyframe and we press G, we can do all sorts of crazy cool stuff with it. But I'm going to just undo that for a second. Uh, we can probably have a much nicer looking effect if we select proportional editing. With proportional editing selected, I'm going to press G for goat again, G. And we're going to see the circle, which is amazing. And we can scroll our mouse wheel up, or we can scroll our mouse wheel down to expand this. And expanding it just increases the area of effect. Now I'm going to right click again just to disable that. And while we, I'm going to press this button over here to make sure we are on keyframe one. And I'm going to select point, and I'm going to say, let's click on that. Well, let's use selected only. I'm going to say insert, and now we have a keyframe over here. In fact, I'm going to say insert, and I'm just going to select this entire shape. Now, when I press G, hold on, let me just quickly go back to, let's just change the frame to a new frame, frame 60. And 60 frames is about two seconds, right? So where do we want this animation to be within two seconds? So I'm going to press G for, for goat, and I'm just going to find a random, a random endpoint. Maybe something like that would be good. And with that selected, I'm going to insert keyframe. And if we go back, if we press tab to go into object mode, just give it a second to load. If we press play, might run a little bit slow because we've got all those subdivision surfaces, so you don't have to press play. Okay, it's definitely working. Uh, now I'm going to go to the next frame, which is going to be 120. And I am going to go back into edit mode and you don't have to do this in render view mode and if you want to speed up your computer if it's struggling just uh, dis click on the real-time display icon here turn it off by turning it off uh, your computer will have less resources that it needs to use to follow along so now we're going to press um, G for goat
and I actually want to make this well let's key this frame it's fine no I don't like it I'm gonna let's move this to 90 and let's insert a keyframe here and then let's go to 120 now we're gonna press G and I'll do something like that and we'll insert a keyframe and I'm also going to go to 30 let's just press tab to go into object mode and let's just go to frame 30 we can type it in over here so that's the point we are at at frame 30 so perhaps what we could do now that we yeah we can go back into edit mode and we can press G just make this a little bit smaller something like that could be interesting and we'll say insert keyframe and uh, let's go back into object mode and let's go back to the very first frame now with the very first frame selected we can go to edit mode so that we get the outline of the first frame and then we can go to frame let's make it end at 160 you could probably do a better job at this fortunately I've got work to do so I don't have much time for this um, we can now insert keyframe so basically at frame 160 it's gonna cycle back to the original design so now we're gonna quickly do that and we're gonna do one more thing before we continue let's go back into object mode uh, let's just quickly look at our graph editor I just want to see how things are flowing uh, okay there's no need to go into the graph editor now I'll explain this another time but uh, last thing you need to do now all you need to do is render animation now let me show you how to render your animation correctly at the very least I could show you that because uh, you want to do it in PNGs so step number one make a compression list for maximum quality number two the best way to do it is just use a JPEG or PNG PNG is perfect choose the file area where you want to save it to I'm gonna leave it in the you know what I'm gonna leave it in the temporary file that's fine and uh, once you're happy with that all you need to do is say render animation alright so once everything has been rendered out uh, you need to go to the file location where it's placed in my case it is in temporary files and we have all these wonderful images of here all 160 of them and uh, if you have more perhaps you didn't create an end date as well to the last point like I did so just keep that in mind um, right so the next thing we want to do is click over here and now we want to go to our video sequencer and uh, we want to add image sequence and now you just have to find where you found it uh, where you saved it and I'm just going to quickly going to go to the actual location the temp file location if I, there we go so here it is and uh, I'm just going to click over your name so you can organize it from 1 to, uh, to six, uh, 160 I'm going to press A to select all I'm going to say add and before I add it actually let me just cancel you want to make sure that you go back to keyframe one before you do anything and once you've done that then you can press add I can't believe I almost made that rookie mistake and just find it and uh, mine is over here temporary right so it's in order and now I press A for Apple to select everything and I press add images and I'm just going to zoom out of here and now in our render settings we can change this to a video AVI JPEG and we want the quality to be 100 percent and uh, yeah and just like that uh, we can now 
render out this animation and you'll notice it'll be a lot faster now because it's rendering it out from the images. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And just like that, that's done. And if we just want to quickly preview it without leaving Blender, you can just press Escape there and we can click Render, View Animation. And this is what we have. It's not great, but it gives you the idea of what you could do if you spent a little bit more time on this than I did. Cheers.